What is up? I am back. My name is John Crump, and this is John Crump Live. I see Richard joining behind the scenes right now. But before we get into that, let's drop the intro. And we are live. How are you guys doing? And how are you doing, Richard Hughes? Wonderful, Crumpy. How are you? I am doing just great. So I threw on my not phone that I usually use to stream from uh, Brave Browser. I tested it. It worked. And You're, as you're breaking up. I don't know if it's me or you. Are you there, Walter Keller? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. I guess that was Rich because you are not breaking up. Okay. Rich has been having all sorts of computer issues okay. lately. It's not Every, like he's a cloud engineer or something. Everybody wanted to talk to me at 5 o'clock. Everybody. So not, besides, Everyone wanted to talk to you? Yeah, everybody shows up in the shop here at 5 o'clock. So, um, no. Yeah. You should just fire Joe then. <laughs> he'll be... He'll be, he'll be meandering through here pretty soon here so um he's still here but um yeah. projects projects yeah. speaking of projects it's all due with projects too so oh what projects do you have going on oh uh, no i can't i can't I, I can't talk about those <laughs> all right you're, you're being like me now come on <laughs> um i got i have the rarest bottle of water in the whole country starbase Launch That's water. actually from Starbase by someone that I is awesome. one of my acquaintances that's been there at, was there at the last launch. Um, yes, and um, I've, I've looked all over the place for this, the Gateway to Mars. <laughs> There's not even empty bottles on eBay. So um, by, the, by, the, by the way, your storage is low on your computer. The what? Your storage. You're running out of disk space. Oh. Oh, you you so you, you've already downloaded the contents on my uh, hard drive, or is that one? <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> There's nothing that interesting in there, really. But um, not even where I got the bottle from. <laughs> but uh, no, oh, that's cool. No, they uh, he handed that to him when um, uh, at that time when they was he was out there for the launch for other reasons. He wasn't launching anything, but. But cool. um, anyways, yeah. So he, I, 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 like I said, I, I told Hank Strange, I said this is this is rarer than your, uh, your cyber truck that you want. So, um, and he asked me, is that is that your is that in the refrigerator at the shop? I'm like, no, you're not going to drink it. You're not going to drink my cyber yeah. water. I almost bought a car this weekend, but um, I'm putting that on hold because I had to replace a furnace and and two AC units. They had to replace what? Uh, my furnace and AC units. Oh, oh, oh. oh AC. Ouch, ouch, ouchie. Yeah, ouchie. The AC yeah. units are going bad, so it was like $5,000 just to repair it. So they're like, screw it. Let's just go. Get another <laughs> one. from all. You have, everything. you have gas heat up there? Yeah. Okay. And we're going to replace the, 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 the gas heater as well. Okay. Yeah, because we. That's old. So I'm, might as well just get everything new. I'm one of the oddballs around here that has a gas um, furnace too, 
They don't have gas furnaces in Florida? Well, most people opt for electricity because that's just what they told, you know, they get a heat pump. But I don't know. I've had in the past, we've had issues with heating when it's really cold with a heat pump. So I opted for the gas. Yeah, we just replaced our water heater. Um, it's an electric, it's a hybrid. Oh, really? Okay. So it, it has a tank, but it's also a tankless as well. Okay. Yeah. Cause we got rid of the tank water heater and got a tankless one. And um, it's, my wife has always wanted one. And finally, we got, they, we were always told that because of the venting, we couldn't do it. But the, but the one that we got's got like power venting and and it and it sits right where the old water heater was. So the only problem with the, the reason why we didn't go with the full tankless system is the this because of the size of my house, you would uh, have to do multiple systems. Hey, look look who just look who just walked in here. He's uh Who's that guy? <laughs> Why, hello. <laughs> Hi, he hello, Mr. Shooting Gallery. I can't hear a word he's Yeah, he says hello, Mr. Shooting Gallery. Oh, I was going to say, I expect him to be just kind of... Did you tell him I told you to fire him? <laughs> John says me to fire you. Wow. Okay. Well, I... I, wow. I, I, okay. I, I He's had a couple of uh, challenges over the last couple of days, but it, it's nothing that anybody else hasn't had. So, um, Not minor setbacks. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll address them tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. See you later, bye, man. See you. He says bye. Hello, I told you I said bye. He's, he's going home. He's got a. He's got a. You know, he's got a good hour or so ride home. So. He's a good kid. Yeah, yeah. He does whatever you know. He's eager to learn, so that's cool. Yep. Very. And that that's actually one of the things that's hard to find right now people yeah. eagle to go to learn especially in like the trades apparently yeah i mean they don't understand that once they get it figured out the people with trades they they, they own the world i mean um <laughs> walt and his diversity hires yes <laughs> the dei hire uh, look here's my here's my theory on all that stuff if you can do the job i'll hire you. if you can't do the job sorry charlie you know, I, you know, I, I need somebody with at least a little bit of uh, uh, capacity, capability, someone, you know. Uh, let me let me ask you a question. Did you I know you don't watch the view, but did you see the clip of the lady from the view? The, the lady, what? The solar eclipse, earthquakes and cicadas on global warming. <laughs> no, I, I didn't see that. No. <laughs> And, and Whoopi Goldberg, at least she had the sense to say, uh, that's not right. That th Those things have nothing to do with the environment. You know, like, earthquakes are in the ground. They're not affected. The sun's oh. in the sky. The yeah. cicadas, they're on a schedule that's been for, for millions of years. And she's like, well, I just know what I see. <laughs> I, now, she's an attorney. I, I thought she was a lawyer also. I don't know, but she's an idiot. <laughs> oh, you mean Whoopi Goldberg? No, no. The, the, oh, oh no, other. Whoopi. Whoopi's like, no, no, that's not right. Well, Whoopi Costa. called her out saying that's wrong. There's nothing oh, okay. to do with the fire. Okay. <laughs> the, the global warming is not going to affect the sun. The sun might affect global warming, but not the other way around. Lawyer yeah. and journalist. Lawyer and journalist. Okay. Um, and you said there was the casadas. I mean. It's something to do no, with No, she that. said the cicadas. cicadas? No, she didn't say cicada right. She said cicadas. Uh, yeah. And we're talking the about the big... are emerging. So for those like... that don't know, cicadas spend 17 years of their life underground. They climb up a tree, mate, and then burrow underground again. Really? Or die. And then the females Sorry. put the eggs underground. I have... But, I have... So, there's like 17, as they call classes, like you have a graduating class from your high school. Right. There's 17 classes. So there's 17. They spend 17 years underground and they mature or whatever. But apparently this year, there's two classes emerging at the same time. And that only happens every 220 years. Yeah, but, but it's every 220 years. Yeah. Wow. They're going back forever. Wow. Yeah. Well, I have, I, speaking of those 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 big old bugs. I had one land on my leg. I was at a wedding um, on Saturday, and I'm sitting there, and 
and I didn't see it. It landed on my leg. It was outside this wedding. And um, and the guy behind me in the seat goes, there's a bug on your leg. And I'm looking down at the crusade, and I kind of just I just flicked it off. I just, you know, they're not going to hurt nothing, you know. <laughs> and the girl sitting next to me, rather attractive young lady, goes, I don't like bugs. I, I'm not an outside person. Don't even. I should have picked it up and put it on her on her cute little leg there, but I uh, didn't. I graduated didn't University of Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Hmm. Hmm. Dame, Dame. Well, then again, this other idiot graduated, what, uh, magna cum laude at Boston <laughs> University and became a bartender and then uh, a, a congressperson. Oh, that. Hmm. Hmm. Which one is? Oh, AOC. Oh, she she graduated. Cool. cool. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it. I'll keep it. Magna cum laude at yeah. Boston <laughs> University. Look, no, I, really? I have a, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. It, it conspiracy is not a crime, mind. Rich. You cannot be charged with conspiracy. It is oh, a category. It's, no, no, that was racket. No, was it racketeering uh, or what, what is it? Yeah, racketeering. That racket, racketeering. Hmm. Hmm. Well, on that note. Well, a bunch of mafia people are probably like, can I get out of jail now? Yeah, yeah. Where's my <laughs> ticket out? Um, yeah. Well, we got to talk about projects. We should talk about projects. Well, I, I was just figuring, I, you know, I, I made up the thumbnail. And I'm like, with my son on Scott? the front. With my son yeah, on the everything front. going. Well, that that's the, I got to get one. Of, I got to get the different Safety Harbor firearm shirt next time I'm over. Okay. And I got to get one of those uh, the hoodies, hoodies that you're selling. Okay, we can arrange that. Yeah, I got to pick yeah. that up. I, if I wouldn't known you were on the show, um, I would have worn my shirt, but I just noticed it like right before I was about to call Rich say, "Hey, you're gonna fly solo today because I'm working on some stuff." Oh, but I oh, saw but... Walter Keller, and I was like, "Man, yeah, I, I saw it. Walter the other day when one of your I forget which one it was. You had the shirt on. I was like, "Oh, that's a nice shirt." Yeah, yeah. I, I push it. I, the KES stock is probably the best stock I've ever Hold on. used. Where is it? I'll be right back. I don't even have it. Mine's on my MP5, so. Oh, we can't touch guns. That's right. We can't touch well, guns. Well, I can show the stock. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Just don't show it attached oh. to the gun. I, I got to grab my laptop back. Because, you know, an, an MP5K fits perfect in, in a laptop bag. Uh, I'm sure it will. <laughs> yeah, one of my buddies has uh, the machine gun, the machine gun M uh, MP5 K in the briefcase. Oh yes, yes. Oh, yeah. the full on. Yeah, th this yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, so that that's really cool. That's and along with the the 50 cal. Oh. So you got barrels for the. Uh... This is another project. This what is, is it? This is the front end of a Madsen M50. Oh, Ooh. the Madsen. Yeah, yeah I mean, you... it, it's as I've I've I now possess for the public um, repair sections for the Madsen. Um, Madsen's uh -huh. a badass gun, dude. Um, now is that a nine mil? What what caliber is that? Nine millimeter, nine millimeter. Um, oh, yeah, I love the Madsen, man. <laughs> Especially if it's the true SMG. It will be all of that. Yes, um, I acquired some proper magazines, which um, those are pricey, right? Those are what? Pricey. Um, well, what I found was once I got the Madsen parts kit, I went to Apex Gun Parts, and I said I, I found on their website they said they had Madsen mags. So I order one or two because I always get two and they don't fit. And I'm like, all right, WTF over. I mean, what's what's going on? Um, they did make a later model of the Madsen that has a curved magazine. Maybe that uh, fits. You gotta get the straight ones. Yeah. Well, I acquired these from another source and I won't go into that source but these are the proper mag <laughs> these are the proper magazines um, i finally got a couple really nice clean ones and so and i have a barrel that i purchased from somebody else who sells barrels and i'm gonna probably make barrels too now that i have a example and um so yeah that's getting ready to be put together and 
we'll uh, take it out to the clandestine testing facility and give it a proper uh, break in. Uh, so. You know, what I never noticed. You What's have that? an Area 51 sign in your in your office. Area 51. Yeah. Oh, the 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 Lockheed Martin, the, the skunk works. Yeah. Yeah, I picked that up at the gift shop at the uh, Museum of Flight in Seattle last uh, last April, actually. So um, yeah, Skunk Orcs is who actually runs Area Fifty One. If people don't know, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I yeah yeah. I mean, um, my sister used to work for Otis Elevator, and I'll just she's been out there, um, and. It's more you than one. Aliens? It's more than one floor. I'll just say that. So. You see aliens? Well, it's an elevator, so uh, y- y- I, I heard it goes down. <laughs> it goes down like down, down, down. So like the Pentagon goes down. Um, I don't know like how far. Kamala Harris goes down. Uh, uh, knee pads, yeah. Um, knee pads, Harris, yeah. Um. It, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I, I shouldn't talk about it. So anyways, um, <laughs> I just heard things. Um, but anyways, yeah, I, I have no doubt it's a, a, a very uh, interesting complex out there once you get past the, the sand. Um, but um, anyways, projects, projects. Well, do you so you're on? you're doing a CZ Scorpion. Yeah, the barrels. Yes, we have um, plenty of Scorpion barrels. I got those made. Um for the the VZ sixty one Scorpion, mm-hmm. that is not the uh, the old one. That's such a cool one. looking not, not, not the Evo that. three, not the plastic one. Um, right. Um, what else here? Um, those you, you doing the Turcanelli? Turk, yeah, the magazine tubes, the Turcanelli. Yep, yep, and those work for the for the Banelli also. Um, for those, and um, I've sold quite a few of them, and nobody's told me they don't work. So that's usually a good indicator that they do work. Um, every once in a while, I guess somebody that, that emails or calls and says, your stent, your stent tube doesn't work. It's not right. And I'm like, you sell them around tube. Well, and I've sold just say a couple more than a couple. And, um, and nobody else tells me that, but every once in a while you get an oddball. that doesn't know how to know what he's doing, but, um, of course, all SOTs, of course. Um, <laughs> uh, so what else is going on here? Well, um, let me see. One broke milling machine. They told me the part was a lathe, which was $8,500 for a replacement CPU um, <laughs> for basically a PC. I um, built it out of Raspberry Pi. <laughs> I'm going to have it repaired. There's a place here in Florida that repairs them, so I'm going to have it repaired. It's probably it could so. Be, I I mean, you're you're telling me it's an I, IBM, an Intel chipped, like well, single board it, computer. It, it doesn't look like a like a, It's not like a PC stuck in the in the cabinet. It's in its own thing, and yeah. Um, but it's the machine. The Herco is window based, Windows based. Oh no so, way! Yeah. So um, uh, it wasn't booting up, and we thought it the tech was out here, and this guy's pretty knowledgeable. He's he's he didn't come out to actually work on the lathe. He came out to work on my milling machine. And he said, hey, I said, I'm having this problem with the lathe right next to it. And he goes, I'll take a look at it. And he starts messing. With, oh, it's probably the CMOS or something, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he's going mm-hmm. through things. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, I wish it was. But it's not. What I'm doing is not making it come back to life. It would go to a point when you boot up. And then it would go right back to the beginning, just over and over and over. So you got a boot loop. Yeah, a boot loop. You, you, are, kind of, you are getting the blue screen of death. Yeah. So um, he tried this and he tried that. And um, the battery, the um, the battery that's inside there um, was dead. He replaced the battery. That didn't fix it. Yeah, it should it. be like a CR2032. What's that? It, it should be a coin cell. The the CR2032. Like a yeah, battery. it was like a watch like battery. A like a watch battery yeah, and bigger. Yeah, 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 exactly. And replaced that. That didn't fix it. So finally, um, it, it's like you got something wrong with that. And so Herkel wanted eight thousand five hundred dollars for one for a replacement, and I was. Then he told me about a place here in Florida that does repairs and does um, updates and all this stuff for the for the Herco machines. 
so I boxed it up. I called them today and they said, yeah, we'll take a look at it. And, you know, we'll, we'll give you a quote. We'll let you know how much it is. And I'm like, so I boxed it up, sent it off. So, so. I mean, for, for something like that, and, and I don't know what's on it, if it has like a daughter board and that has all the, you know, opto isolated relays to run uh, the lathe, but well, I mean, all the relays for the mechanical stuff, all the operations are a separate, they're separate like mm -hmm, industrial mm -hmm. style relays and all that stuff. Um, I think it's just the brain, you know. The I, I mean, th those things are stupid cheap. <laughs> yeah, well, unless... you know, they're 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 probably getting something white labeled from somebody else with, you know, probably almost no magic on it. No, probably not. But the magic is the fact that they haven't. You don't. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that's the magic. Um, so, like I said, I'll send it off, get it repaired. It'll it'll probably be a lot less. Um, and this this guy this guy's got a good reputation. He's not a you know he's been doing it okay. for like, like twenty five years or something. So, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. yeah. What happens with the CNC machines after say 10, 11, 12 years? A lot of places consider them old. You know and yeah. Yeah, I, I heard you. I didn't catch a whole lot of Hank's show last night, but I heard you talking about that. Yeah. And and I guess, you know, I, I look at what you have. I'm like, man, that's one hell of an investment because you got four of those big CNC machines and uh, a CNC lathe, right? Right, 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 right. And that's that's a, that's a stupid amount of money. Is it? Are, are they all 10 years old? Or? No, the milling machines are... I got those in 2020 during right, right as COVID was oh. getting kicked off. So a little oh, wow. advice to anybody, anybody buying, don't buy your machinery during a, a pandemic. Because, um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, um, and then the uh, the two hosses are a 10 and a 13. So they're older, you know, but they're not mm -hmm. ancient. They're not ancient. Um, and the lathe I bought in, um, in 13, I believe it was, 13 or 14. So, yeah. Um, it's working on 10 years old too. So, um, yeah, I mean, but my, my machines don't run 24 seven or anything like that. Some shops run all, all day and all night. Yeah. You're, um, you're just running like one shift. You're not running yeah, three yeah. shifts or anything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're not, we're not Chinese. So, um, I don't, I don't have slave labor. So, um, but yeah, still things they wear out, you know, this, you know, look at a PC. I mean, you get 10 years out of a PC normally. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've got a. I have, I have had, I have had one that long. I mean, there's the ones that I've had have lasted ten years, but. Um. Yeah, I, I, I have, you know, for my desktop, I have Macs, and so I've got a 2012 MacBook Pro. I retired like you know a year plus ago. Uh, I'm now on a Mac Mini right now, but. I mean, I have, a, I have a Mac too that I, that I, I love the thing. It worked really well. I used to, do, I used to do a podcast with Hank with it. But mm -hmm. it needs it needs it needs a couple things, you know, and I got to take it to somebody and get it, get it, get it, um, you know, get it fixed. I'd love to put a it laptop back. or yeah, a laptop. Yeah. So. Um, um, but anyways, so that, yeah, lathe, lathe work stuff, um, milling machine stuff. I had the hurt. I had the Haas service guy and working on the big Haas uh, last week. Haven't got the bill for that yet. Um <laughs> <laughs> well, because there's 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 travel time and there's time oh, working the machine and there's oh yeah 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 it goes on and on and on. But I was at a point where I didn't know why it wasn't running right. I'd, I'd had somebody else in here that wasn't a Haas person, good guy, but it just, we weren't getting an answer. And finally, the Haas guy walks in and goes, "I think it's your there's an air cylinder that operates the tool changing arm thing," and he goes, "I bet that's bad." And um, we replaced it, and it seems to be running. So, hmm. um, oh, cool! But once again, I, I haven't got the bill for that yet. So. Is that the same I one that's of... been acted up? Yeah, that was the one that would run sometime. It ran for a week straight, and then it, next day you come in, you go to start it, and it stops right in the middle of tool change. Yeah, because I, I was joking. The one day I came by, it was cold. I'm like, it's probably just yeah. cold. Well, now that makes sense because the piston was kind of gummed up, probably inside, and mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. colder temperature made that thicker and mm -hmm. gummier and that's what probably caused that because it has x amount of time to make the change and then it'll time mm -hmm. out so um gotcha that kind of makes sense now hey i, I'm gonna I gotta say i'm kind on of on something oh go i want to ask you a question on something there is a 
made law that looks like it's going to pass. Um, pull up, uh, by the way, I just put out an article we're going to talk about in a second, but there's a law that looks like it's going to pass that's going to require any like type of table saw or anything, since you deal with tools, to have a flush sensor. A hot dog cutter sensor? Yeah. I... Yeah, I've seen those things. I would, I'm not. I'm not going to test it. Honestly. So for a hundred plus, yeah. well, I use a hot dog. For for a hundred plus <laughs> years, we haven't had any of that. It was just stupid expensive to have it. And just like the compact fluorescent bulbs, nobody wanted those toxic waste things. That's crap. Yeah. Uh, but they got a lobbyist in Congress, and uh, to make incandescent bulbs illegal. In in the stupid thing, the United States, all lighting is 3% use of the electricity. So it doesn't even matter if you're 50% more efficient. It, it's just going to be 1.5%. It, it's it's a real minimalist, really and, annoying. And, and shout out to Putang out there. And they promoted all that stuff as, oh, they last for years. They last for years. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 you know, the bulb will outlast me. Somehow it doesn't. No. This is crazy because... Uh, like I know you're saying talk about lobbyists and everything, right? But the actual toll companies, they're lobbyists, they're against it. Yeah, but they're somebody got paid off to make it happen, to make oh, it work. I'm quite sure. Dude, I, on, look, I well, I there's I, only one company that holds the patent to that technology. Who? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I, it's funny. I've seen that stuff that, come up in my feed lately, and I really didn't pay attention. That's been to around it. for a long time, actually. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. The, so the 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 patent told held by a single company. So they they just got, you know, their lobbyists to make it so. <laughs> yeah. Full stop. My that, grandfather, a, my, my grandfather took off one of his digits with us with a table saw. Look, I, I yeah, used but, to do home improvement contracting. I, I got all my fingers. I survived it. Mo most but, people can use a hunk of wood. <laughs> but my grandfather also had a train wheel fall on his hand and took off a couple of digits too. So whoa, yeah, you know, back wow. back back before everybody you know when they, they tripped and fall and they they called the yeah. uh, Rabinowitz and Rabinowitz. You know, what I mean that's what uh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Unbelievable. Bosch made their own version, and Saul Stop sued them and won. Oh, oh wow. shoot! Hmm. So basically, and and their technology is like the cheapest Saul they have is like a thousand bucks. Hmm. So, uh, wow, wow! It, it's funny. A neighbor yesterday was throwing out a radial arm saw, and I drove by with my wife. She's like, "You're not taking that home." I'm like. Sure. Well, well no, they opened the help, help me out. What, what's Peggy say when you oh, do that? Uh, she doesn't say anything. <laughs> um, because that's not going to make any difference. <laughs> I I was I was doing yard work Sunday with a with a steel um, weed whacker that a neighbor threw out down the street. Um, all I had to do was buy a replacement head for it, which was a better one yeah. than a steel one. And I'm and I'm cutting the. I'm cutting nice. the pro. Every time I turned around. There were new people would move in the neighborhood and mm -hmm. they, they drag all this junk with them down from wherever. And then they realize they can't fit it all in their garage and they throw yep. away all this stuff. I got lawnmowers and weed whackers and, you know, it's like, or, or the guy that threw that steel away says, I'm, he was out front in his yard. He goes, yeah, yeah, take it. I'm getting an electric one. I was like, okay, well, great. I'll take it. Boom. That thing fired right up and ran just fine. <laughs> It's probably a three hundred dollar weed whacker, but um. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know you've done that with generators in the past. Yeah, People I mean, throw a generator out. Yeah, you know, I mean, Hank's generator is one that I got for fifty bucks. Um, Patrick's generator is another one I got for fifty bucks. Clean the carburetor up, boom, running. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But um. But anyways, yeah, that's. I mean, that's cool. I get it. I understand. A lot of people, you know, there are folks that are not designed to operate any type of machinery. None. Yeah, I, I get it. So it's I'm a little annoyed at at things. All right, so you've actually driven in my Lexus. My Lexus is like a spaceship with all the displays right. and all the crap. Right, right, Forget right, about right, what right. I've added to it. Right. It, and it just says, you know, maintenance, see dealer. I'm like, you could give me a video on what's wrong. 
maintenance dealer what and i look it up it says whenever that comes up get an oil change i'm like oh oh okay yeah yeah i mean it's been five thousand miles get an oil change so yeah i mean uh, yeah see a dealer yeah i mean it could be lots of different things you know it could be something really simple that you can fix but you know not going to fix no I, I actually looked it up on a, on like three different sites including lexus's own site it's like the the c dealer for maintenance is oil change you know it's oh. a five thousand mile interval oh 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 okay well it's why like, doesn't it just why doesn't it just say you know change your oil stupid you right my I mean? my 2007 envoy is like oil life 85 right, percent yeah, change yeah, oil yeah, yeah right right the, the suburban has that you know shows you as it's going down that's like seven thousand miles between the oil change though which is kind of stretching the uh yeah I, well I, I guess we grew up in the day where you change it like every thousand miles or three thousand that was the thing yeah. they were pushing for a while too um yes newer oils mostly better yeah but you know i you know it's i my my suburban has a lot of miles on it so um you know i don't want to push the envelope too much but it's running fine so so i i guess a, a couple of questions so you you build the 50 BMT Correct. bolt action you've got do you actually sell the pistol version or was that just your play thing i've done a couple for people um i have barrels i have a quite a little pile of 12 inch barrels laying around um i might do some more but it's not for everybody you know i mean i, I when people ask me what kind of ballistics do you get out of that what is it do with a, i've had people ask me that what does it do with 100 yards i'm like okay all right all right all right that's all not right. what it's for it's for just making noise and and showing off to your friends that's what it's for yeah, yeah. um uh, you know whatever I, you know. Uh, but i do have barrels and i will do one for somebody if they've got to have one just as long as they're i mean once again, as I said, there's some people that shouldn't operate machinery. There are some folks that do not, do not, do not need a 50 caliber <laughs> or should have one um, because they just don't understand how it all works. And, you know, it's, it's so how did you get doing Sten parts? Quite by accident, okay. actually. This was back like 99, 89, something like that. And a friend of mine had just bought some stuff. Uh, a 1919 side plate and i go jim how much was that and he goes that was like 100 bucks and it wasn't finished it was just a, a, a like a, what they would call 80 percent. and i looked at it and i go the light went off it's like ding i can now, make that at, at, at that time uh 1919 kits were a good 1919 kit was 350 dollars Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and you could get a you could get a a, a a used used one for 150 175 dollars um with a barrel everything just minus the the, the right hand side plate so the light went off and it's like ding. all right well you need to draw it up and get some laser cut and i did i didn't have the money to pay for all the laser cutting so i went to a gun show and sold some stuff that i had that i didn't care about raised some money Bought the, uh, got the plates cut, put an ad in Shotgun News in the classified section, and boom, started selling the 1919 plates. Then I did Sten tubes. I drew that up, figured that all out, roll them on by hand, spray the glue, roll them on, do that stuff. Um, started doing that. Um, Sten tubes, Sterling tubes, um, well, Sten barrels, Sten trunnions, you know, the, or, or uh, bushing, as people call it barrel mm -hmm. nuts all that stuff just kind of came one after another so um and at the time there was other people selling the stuff too and that's back you know 99 89 there was no so this is like people would mail you a check yeah yeah i had po box they send money orders they call, send checks call 1-800 sit you over firearms <laughs> no, that, that, standing that, by that that was uh that was pre uh safety over firearms so um you know, money. Some people send cash. Send cash in an envelope. You know, what I mean, but um, you know, and uh, like I said, a classified ad in the back of Shotgun News at the time, which I sold mm -hmm. thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of stuff out of a little fifteen dollar classified ad. Oh my gosh! Oh wow. yeah, I mean, because that's 
that's the place people went to look for stuff. Like that. Right, right. Um, there was no internet. There was no websites to go to to buy all this stuff and all. It was the internet, but there wasn't like it is now. Um, so th that's pretty amazing when you think about it. For $15, you're buying your way into like a very profitable audience. Oh, yeah. I mean, Where, whereas now everything is so dispersed. I, I've, you know, the only time I've ever heard of Shotgun News is from you. I mean, Shotgun News used to come and it would be it's still out there. It, you know, it's firearms news now. Firearms, yeah, yeah, fire, yeah. But it used to be, you know, an inch thick, three quarters of an inch thick, full of all all the classified ads you see now on the internet. All the classified ads, but the classic firearms, Atlantic, mm -hmm. Atlantic this before Atlantic. But a lot of these companies all advertised in Shotgun News before the internet came around. So, um, I was I used to buy stuff from Classic Firearms back when they were you know, selling AKs and SKSs and all the parts and pieces for those and um, yeah, so, you know, it's just, um, uh, Sarko, for every guy, Sarko still runs it in the firearms new, firearms mm -hmm. new, but, but, um, yeah, I kind of, I, I just got rid of the classified ad in, in firearm news probably two years ago. I had it running mm -hmm. up to that point and people were still, you still get stuff every once in a while in the PO box. Oh, that's funny. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a different crowd. Yeah, yeah. That are building their own stuff, as you guys probably know. Um, or printing. You know, print, right. Well, now, now, now with 3D printing and all that stuff, it's a whole, you know, you've got the younger folks doing that stuff now, too. Um, whether they're printing that stuff or they're making, um, you know, pencil holders or whatever. Um, yeah. That was inner arm for the CIA front. Inner arm co. There was, there's been different inner, I don't know, you know, Richard, um, the Hoff, Hoffman, you know, that question came up to him and, and I'm sure there's always been front companies for the CIA. The CIA distributed thousands of these things too, the Madsons. Cause these things were back in the day, the Madsen was one of these like dirt cheap, super cheap submachine guns that I mean, you hand them out to the, to this group and you hand them out to that group and, you know, all over the world. Um. Uh, yeah, that was a good old days. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you know, so the CIA supposedly at one time had like whole warehouses full of AKs that they acquired from places. And um. So with with your business, you have a lot of different things. I I know, like the the Turcanelli. It was like, oh, I could do this. Well, that makes sense. That was one of those things. It was like. Okay, well, I go on the internet. Let's see who's selling seven round mag tubes and how much. Well, there's guys selling them. Most of them are out of stock. There's a guy that's selling titanium ones for $300 a piece. And I don't know what the fuck you need a titanium magazine tube for. I mean, you're going to, you're going to save a half an ounce or something. I, I, I don't get it, you know. But if you want that, go over there. I can get you one for. $95 or 90 or whatever, depending where you buy it from. I've been selling them on eBay too, which is, I was like, it's on eBay. It's like, yeah, there's other people selling magazine tubes. So, so will I. Boop. And, oh, cool. But, but, anyways, yeah. So it was just an opportunity I saw and, you know, and nothing, nothing wrong about it. There's nothing to saying you can't change yours to a seven versus five. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. just import rules, you know, that the importers have to abide by. So what I'm getting at is it's kind of interesting how you do these things. It's not like you're oh. doing a whole lot of market research. You're like, oh, um, I can make that. Yeah, a lot of times that is. I mean, a new parts kit comes out on the market. Okay, like the Madsen. I started mm -hmm. thinking about doing the Madsen before the frames and receivers jumbo mumbo jumbo started. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I had just gotten a quote back from the people that are bending those for me. I was just about ready to push the button. And it was like, uh, oh. let's see what happens. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there was all kinds of talk about previous determinations were no good anymore. Right, and this, right. that, and the other. And I was like, that was in 22, actually. So I, I didn't do anything. And then once this whole, the frames and receivers thing gets a little more sorted out, I said, fuck it. It's time to do it. Boom, hit the button. And, and oh, cool. got the quote back. And the quote was pretty much the same as it was in 22. And, and uh, boom, I got re replacement sections mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so 
Yeah, I mean, so that's what that's how it works for me. I see something, it's like, oh, yeah, I might be able to sell a couple of those. So you know, once again, I'm not looking to, um, you know, uh, I don't look. I I like to have a nice profit margin. That's what I look for, a nice profit margin. So if I can make something relatively inexpensive and sell it still cheaper than everybody else and still make a decent amount of money, I'm in. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know, you got to have a need for people who want to have. Uh, there's got to be a market. and There's got to be a, a want out there for it, too. I mean, there are some things. Man, I missed it pretty darn slow. Cause, yeah, well, yeah, everybody does. You know, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, this whole cut up barrel thing is such a bunch of silly silliness. Um, but um, but yeah, you know, and but it creates opportunities for other folks. You know, at mm -hmm. one time mm -hmm. at one time there was no AK barrels. Now you can get AK barrels by the truckload if you want. So, oh, shoot. you know, um, AK receivers, you know, I mean, I'm, I bought AK receivers for $15 from like center fire systems when they're on sale and stuff back, back in the old times, you know, there's no way you got that for that money. You had to or like AR receivers for 30 something bucks. You know, there was a time when you couldn't get an AR receiver any less than $99 everywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was, you know, Oh, I, I got these for like Anderson's for $32. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, I don't see how they can make it for that. They do because they do them in mass, but right, um, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's more costs more money to buy it eighty percent lower than it oh, does yeah. to cost a finished receiver. So, yeah, I I got this eighty percent from uh, Alex Precision Manufacturing. He did the mm -hmm. tusk lowers. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I don't know if I could say what he sold them to me for, but it, it was more than the finished one. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, hell well, yeah. back, back when they were threatening, well, when Biden was, I don't know what it was, I did a, my last run of AR lowers that are finished and I made those from 80% lowers mm -hmm. and I bought some 80% lowers from Anderson. And, um, I bought, I think about a hundred, 150 of them from at one time. It was a really good price. I was like, I was like, Wow, I'm in. Give me some, and um, but now, you know, my I can't, I can't, I can't sell my lowers for thirty five dollars. I'm, I'm, I'm giving them away if I sell them for thirty five dollars, right. forty dollars. So right. Well, you you bought raw ones. You had to machine them, and then you have to get them and serialize them and uh, anodize, serialize, them. anodize them, all that stuff. So, um, but you know, I see it this way. You know, we got an election coming up. It might get crazy again. You know, and so gets, is there a new project on the horizon? Um, well, some little things of it. Well, major project? I don't know. Well, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, man. Oh, by the I, way, well, I do I, have a 50 you, Harbor You said you did lower. something. I asked if you had pictures of it. Oh, oh, that. Um, well, I already asked him about a project, and he said he couldn't tell me. Well, that was something else completely different than what Richard's talking about. I've been... Oh, wow. I've been I've been helping secret projects. I've been helping somebody that, that that is doing stuff with these guys. So, um, yeah, it's a long are story. You, are you building you. Elon oh. Musk a gun? You're building gonna, rockets now? No, no. I wish that'd be cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> be like a Von Braun kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, it's funny you say that. He, well, anyway, I can't talk about it. But anyways, um, <laughs> um. Um, projects. Well, your project you're working on, I've I helped. I've got a, I got a pinky into that um, um, with some barrels and stuff um, that are sitting here. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, the Gatling gun project. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other yeah, one. So um, the other one is um, um, related to the Nylog, and um, that's not really. I don't think it's my project per se. It's somebody else is making some parts for that, um, but he hasn't finished everything he wants to do or he thinks he can do so um i was messing around with some enfield drill rifles i don't know if you guys saw oh, that yeah yeah that's the other thing i want to talk about yeah you yeah, got cool yeah. stuff going on with that yeah so, so yes. when when i saw a drill rifle i didn't realize that meant for military drills that it yes yeah you know, like, march, marching around drill and, rifle you know. a tool what is that for rifling i'm like you know well i didn't know what that was they were supposed to be drill rifles. 
Um, but didn't when they bring them here, rifle? they what's that? Rich didn't know what a drill rifle was. No, I I didn't know what a drill rifle was. Just marching around and you know, um, but when they brought those drill rifles here, they drill a hole in the receiver and put a rod in there and weld the rod in um, to deactivate them. Now they still want you to provide an. You still have to be an FFL to purchase them. Um, really? So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's hmm. kind of doesn't make any sense. Mm, well, you know, look who's doing this stuff. Um, um, so, so I'm looking at them going, you know what, I'm going to get a couple of those and see if we can reactivate them. So the reactivating part is making them to 45 caliber, 45 ACP to feed off of a, like a 1911 magazine. Uh huh. Um, there's kits out there. You've been able to buy in the past, like from Mauser, um, actions to do that. Um, but I don't know if anybody's well back in World War II, the Delisle carbine, which was a suppressed um, Enfield action with in 45 caliber. You see that they got the big funny um, looking suppressor that's instead of a barrel. Um, mm -hmm. That was kind of the inspiration of the idea behind it. Um, so yeah, we bought a couple. Um, Chris who works for me bought one. Um, we bought some barrel blanks from Green Mountain. Um, we're waiting on the chamber reamers to show up so we can do the chambers. I'm going to make mine. Um, so it's a 17 inch barrel, right? I'm going to shorten the wood stock and everything and leave everything like a little Enfield. I'm going to shorten everything down. That way I can still put that big old long band out on the front if I want to. For oh. <laughs> plus, plus leave some threads in the front for a can. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, Chris wants to make a, a the, in, the the British messed around with that Delisle idea, but with a Sterling folding stock on it, and he wants to build one of those. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not that patient for all that. Um, but uh, that's one of the projects that um we're kind of. Now is that going to be a product or is that just something you're you're doing um, in the shop? Maybe the Magwell adapter, machined out mm -hmm. of aluminum. Maybe that. Um, I don't want to get too deep and I'm not going to be reactivating Enfields for people. No. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't that think would so. Be cool, but I, yeah, you know, everybody's got different ideas of what they want. And it'd be hard to be hard. The, and the drill rifles are also missing little parts and pieces. Oh. I, the, the two that we got were missing the actual safeties and the safety levers. So mm -hmm. we had to buy those and add those um, little things like that. The magazines that normally would attach to the bottom of the Enfield, they had no internal parts, so they didn't have a spring and a follower. Because huh. you don't need that. You don't need that when you're doing drill stuff. Right, right. Um, these all came out of India. These rifles. So, um, and they were Indian made. Isopor, Isopor. Okay, you say that. They were Indian made. Indian made. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, the one I have was made in the 20, 1920, and I think it was turned into a drill rifle in thirty seven. Because they market differently. Oh, and um, another thing I bought was a Enfield shotgun. So what they did with the Enfield rifles is they turned them into 410 shotguns. And the 410 cartridge is I have one around here. Oh, it's out there. Um, it looks like a 410 shotgun shell, but it's got a different shape to it. So you can't just drop in an American 410 two and a half inch round and it won't go off. It won't fit. So mm -hmm. um, I found some of the, the original, um, they're actually made in Pakistan, POF, Pakistani Ordnance Factory, 410 rounds. And I've taken it out and shot. It's fun. It's kind of cool um, with the brass cases and all that. Um, but I also have a reamer on order for the 410. And we're going to ream it out to three inch 410 so I can use normal American ammo. Uh huh. Went to an Enfield version of the Obritz. Obritz. Which one is that? I'm not sure what that one that one is. Um, so that's that's that was kind of a and I what I bought was from Centerfire Systems, one of these 410 Enfield shotguns, and it arrived and it's pretty fugly. I mean, to be honest with you, it was the stock was pretty rough and the the metal had pitting and you know it it um but I also at the same time bought another drill rifle with the idea of taking the stock off the drill rifle putting on the 410 shotgun, swapping a few uh -huh. parts around. And for about $210, I had, I got myself an Enfield 410 shotgun 
combining the two together, both with FFLs, but they both have paperwork, all that, all that stuff. Um, and that was kind of just a, I remember back in the day when they were selling the Enfield shotguns and they were really nice looking, you know, but I didn't buy one back then. It was like, <laughs> uh, uh, well, like if you look at like, um, uh, a rock veterans videos, they're shooting one, he's shooting one. It's already been bored out for the uh, standard 410. Oh, okay. And it's a clean looking, nice, shiny blue thing, you know, and, um, what we did with mine was just blasted it and put it in the park tank and parked it. It looks good. I mean, I could show you if you weren't on this uh, firearms restrictive uh, uh, media medium, yeah, yeah. but um, but no, it works fine. It's fun. I mean, anybody no hardly any recoil. You know, it was, it's, Patrick shot it. Patrick liked it. That's a video. You see my video of me bayoneting the steel plate. Yes. Yeah. No, no, that. that, was that. <laughs> that was my uh actually i forgot that the steel plate was behind the cardboard and and that was a real reaction when i hit it and then patrick he like laughs and i just go oh <laughs> it bent the end of the bayonet like this it didn't break off oh. luckily it, it just bent and, oh jeez! Um, i got Can back heated up and bed to back i heated up a little bit and knocked it back and and um but I, that thing's working on seventeen thousand views so you know. oh that's funny yeah, I got, well, I, got that, I got called that, Florida cool. man and everything else, but yeah, it's cool. No worries. I, I did a short with the high point ten millimeter pistol, and what what was it? I, I forgot whose audio, so I'm just stealing people's audio and throwing right. my. But people are hating on that, and I'm getting so much views and interaction on it. It's it, good. It's like it's all good. Out of the hate, it's it. all good. It's all about. It's all about getting that. Uh, yeah, that engagement. I, I give yeah. them thumb, you know, tell me I'm this and I'm that. I give them the thumbs up. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't. Care. Dislikes and likes are treated the same exact way. Well, yeah. it, it's it's funny. People are cutting on like you need to get a better gun. I'm like, you think this is the <laughs> only gun I have? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, 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 it's all good. You know, I was really surprised. I was hesitant to put that video up because I didn't know what people's reaction was, and I put it up. And it took off like a rocket. I was surprised how, so how many. It's like going up. I'm like, yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah. Well, what's really funny is uh, we had the. Uh, you know, I was telling. I'm getting my. I'm getting a new um, air conditioning units and also a new furnace. And all that stuff is in my gun room, locked up in my gun room. So I had to un I unlock the, the door and everything. The guy walks in and he's like, "Holy shit." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i get you know that's like joe joe starts working for me and um here at the shop i have a little bit of ammunition and um in ammo cans and everything you know and he's like oh my, you got a lot of them it's like mm, you know i could use more you know <laughs> i mean you can always you can never have too much ammunition come on you know well i look what a deal comes through you know that's that was my words of wisdom last night on the channel. I said, when ammo comes, mm -hmm. when you get a deal on ammo, don't pass it up. No matter what mm -hmm. you do, mm -hmm. don't pass it up. I, I mean, it seems like nine mil target ammo, like a good price is 26 cents a round. You know, not remanufactured, but original. Right, 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 right. And, and I remember before COVID hit, it was like November, December. I'm like, ah, you know, 100,000 rounds and nine was 19 a, cents. I'm like, that's got, not a bargain. I got $130 for a thousand rounds shipped before COVID, you know, and that I, I, I usually hunt around a little bit for ammo before I buy it. I just don't hit the yeah. first thing that pops up. And, um, yeah, you know, Patrick came across a deal for the gun shop that he's, he's doing gunsmith work for with some, uh, 30 out six, some nine millimeter and some 303 British. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. he, I'm like, how much I'll take it all. And, uh, it was a really good deal. He kept the 30 out six and the 45 and um, the 303 Brit. I took what a friend of his wanted some and I took the rest. It was, it was really inexpensive and it's, you know, it's old, you know, Pakistani ordinance factory, like from 64, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who cares? You know, it's in the original a couple of them are sealed in the original crates and the tins and everything. It's like, Oh yeah. 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 I mean, I could flip it. Hank's like, sell it, sell it, sell it. It's like, no, 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 I'm not selling that. Hey, if, if you don't need to sell it, why? You why? Know, just... Besides, I got a Bren gun kit that I might weld together too. So, 
I didn't write the Bren gun together. You could shoot five, six hundred rounds in a one in one one gathering, you know, and you know, you need you need two or three thousand rounds just to have. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I used to do that with AKM. Whenever I see some AKM, I'd buy a case here, buy a case there, buy a case there. Um but lately AKM was like been on this oh i i don't think i bought ak ammo in 10 years i and last time i bought there was some stupid deal on wolf and i'm like i, I bought like four thousand rounds right 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 yeah i mean but uh, it, it, it it had kind of moderate it got it had a got in a decent level it was like three something 335 340 for a thousand then all of a sudden it just started a steady climb and now it's like four something for a thousand i'm like i'm out for right now i'm out well, I, so that that was I, look look at the Mosin. The Mosin ammo used to be stupid cheap. Oh, like yeah, yeah. Mosins and the ammo were stupid cheap. So if you wanted to shoot, you know, a seven six two round, a larger round, that was a cheap way to go. Yeah. But you know, at two hundred fifty dollars or more for a Mosin, that's no value, no. And, and the ammo's not cheap anymore. So it not as much. Well, three hundred three yeah, British I, used to be like you know like that Pakistani Ordnance Factory stuff would be. 10 cents, 12 cents around because it's old, you know, and it's corrosive and scares people away too. And it's like, but now that stuff is 30, 40 cents around easy, you know, and, and uh, I didn't pay that much for what Patrick found. And I was like, that's why I said, I'll take it all. Whatever you can get, I'll take it all. Um, And I shoot it though, too. It's not like I hoard it to keep it. If we need to go shooting, I grab the ammo and let's go shooting. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you know, oh, well, you know, that's the way it goes. I gotta, that's I, why when you go to Hanks to shoot, I want to be there. Uh, well, the la- last time we went with the, with the Augs, I got, I got ammo raped at that, at that. I, I brought my own ammo. Uh, I had a whole can of like a thousand or 1500 rounds of 223. And it was like, it was more than half gone when I got back. It was like. <laughs> I was like, I was like, holy cow, man! Everybody was like very free with their handfuls of uh, two, of two twenty. Now that stuff was all reloads that I've been buying the reloads from Second Amendment Armory. I think there's a Second Amendment one or two, and it fires fine for the most part, just for blasting for doing stuff like we were doing. Mm-hmm. You know? But um, yeah, they were very uh, they, they, they're they're spoiled, you know. I, those boys are uh, you know, Hank provides ammo a lot of times. Patrick. Man, <laughs> you know, not so much all the time. He's gotten better, but you know. <laughs> but you know, if somebody doesn't have any, and they're you know, like all you know, mopey and stuff, okay, you can have some of my ammo. You know. Well, it, it's fun. Like you, you bring some cool, cool guns out. Like the, I, I'm trying to think. The first gun I shot full auto was one of your Stens. Oh yeah. Well, Joe Going shot a couple the, years. Joe shot the uh, the my VZ twenty four twenty six that I have. A, yes, I, yes, that was. I me. make I, I make barrels for those too. By the way, for the VZ twenty four twenty six, the check uh, it looks like a Uzi. Um, he shot that, and he says this is the best machine gun ever. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. and like Joe, you've just started. How do you know that's the best <laughs> one ever? But the best it, one ever is the SCG forty four. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, Somebody was asking about the STG forty four that you have on order. I oh the semi auto one, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm waiting on Palmetto State's going to come through me on that one, for that one. And that one, hopefully here. Um, I ordered that after from um, Hill and Mac Gunworks after the 2017 shot show. I saw mm-hmm. it. Oh, I saw wow. it. I saw it. Yeah, I saw that there, and then I went home and I said, you know what? I'm going to pop down some money and. The whole amount for it, by the way. Oh, that's seven years. Wow. Yeah. It's almost, we're working on it as long as it, it took me nine years to get the shrike from, from, um, uh, they call himself Fight Light now, but it used to be uh, Aries Defense. Uh huh. I mean, I, and I knew him too. I still don't know. Him. <laughs> but, uh, you, you anyway, don't like him or something? Well, no. Well, yeah, there's, I there's, knew him, but now he's a dick. No, well, <laughs> Uh, there's that thing there's that thing you know people know other people friends of other people friends of friends that you know that i used to mm-hmm. work for kind of thing um but anyways <laughs> yeah i finally got it after nine years i didn't want a refund he would give you a refund if you wanted the money back 
And I said, no, I don't want a refund. I want the upper. And it finally showed up one day at the shop here. And this was years ago, pretty few years back. And I just let it sit and look at it in the box. I didn't open it for a while. I was like, I can't believe it's actually here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so finally I opened it up. We took it out and shot it. Um, it's all right. You know, I mean, once, you know, it's kind of the, you're the, it's the thrill of the hunt. Oh yeah. Yeah. Once you get, once you, once you get to the, you know, you get the, you kill the, you get the, the game or whatever, or the prize. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's like, Oh, next. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, that, that's like PSA has a fantastic price on the RDB. And I'm like, ah, oh, I want one of those. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, it's like, am I just going to buy it and throw it in the closet? Um, the RDB is a 223 or the 308? Yeah, yeah. 223. Okay. Yeah, that, that's the one that ejects down and right. Yes, yes. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I, like, I wonder what she's doing. Well, my significant other just went through here with a with a hand truck. Um, um, but, uh, no, I, those are cool. Those are really cool. It shoots it out the front. Is that what it no, is? no, no. That's the RFB forward. That's a, that's a 308. The, the okay. RDB ejects it down in your shirt pocket. Okay. Do they still have no QD mounts on it? <laughs> I believe you're correct. Uh, I, I I got that SU. That was a project too. The SU six. I picked up an SU sixteen from Hank Strange. Mm -hmm. um, he just took some guns to auction to, to, that he wasn't using and stuff like that. And when I was at his house and I I saw it there and I'm like, huh, that's interesting. And then later one day I'm in the shop here. And I'm like, I want to get that because it's just a it's an oddball gun, you know. So I got it from him. He owed me some money and we did some swapping and trading and boom. And um, so then once you get it, it's got that underfolding plastic stock and and this chintzy bipod handguard and everything. And it's like, this is nasty. <laughs> this is, I mean, it's just, I, I get it. You know, it's backpack done, all this you know mm -hmm, stuff mm -hmm. here. But I think we got to do better. So that's when I ordered the kel lower with the car stock on it, which was an abomination, the car stock. Oh, my God. Um, I, that's you, pretty bad. I mean... The oh look at that. No, oh, she went to Costco. Oh, look at that. Resupply is here. Um you would think a company that all they do is injection molding that they would do something little, real good. A little more the car stock was every edge on that thing was sharp. You know, oh, that's was, funny. Yeah, and it was just like, okay, that's gotta go. I, I took that off and I ended up putting a I actually bought a cheap, a really cheap you gotta, Break out the deburring tool. Oh, I, I wasn't. I was past deburring. I wasn't deburring anything. And and aside from the the, the sharp edges, it was running a commercial uh, buffer tube, which I thought a little odd from you know Caltech. Right. But hey, um, probably cheaper. That's why they did it. And um, so I ended up buying from a company um, um, a sop mod style stock, which is like the. But it was only like. $45 for the stock and the tube and everything much mm -hmm. better, higher quality. I don't know where the injection molded it at, but way better than the Keltec one. I ended up putting, um, what a work on the front end of the Keltec took off that bipod thing is the AK, um, the Magpul, a uh, Zukov actually has clamps to clamp to the barrel. It went on so easy and it's so much better than the, um, than the, now it made the gun heavier and, all that stuff, but it went from being just really freaky, ugly duckling thing to something a mm -hmm. little more usable. And, and everybody goes, wow, that's better. You know? And it's like, so that was another project that I, that I picked up. And, um, um, you know, and I know, okay. I shot it. I made a video. Now what's it doing? <laughs> it's, it's sitting in, <laughs> it's sitting in the, in the, in the, in the safe. So I took the $400 gun. I ended up, about paying about four hundred dollars for it in all, and added another three hundred dollars worth of parts to it to get it to my likes, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then ragged on Keltec some in some videos and stuff. Like that. <laughs> I, I I have a Keltec pistol in my pocket most of the time, so I, I don't, it's not that I don't like their stuff. It's just you know I don't that, like their stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that that. P32 that I that I carry around in my pocket. When I first got it, every edge on that was sharp too. I mean, it's just like you know. That's too I'm, funny. My pockets have have, have uh, have uh, wore off the uh, the sharpness, but um, 
Um, I'm just kind of a, I'm kind of in retentive about when you pick up a gun and there's sharp edges. Oh, for you sure. Sh- yeah. You shouldn't have to deal with that. So, um, it's a Caltech man. It's the, have you ever watched the show live on patrol or live PD? I used to be on. Yeah, but they have live on patrol. It's the same show. They just moved. To oh, they, they brought it back. Yeah. Before, before COVID. Yeah. I used to watch that all the time. <laughs> Not the new one. I haven't watched the new one. So yeah, but, but here's the thing. If they find a gun, oh, yeah, like a criminal. Oh, a gun, what do they usually it's, find? It's going to be one of two guns. And they're both coincidentally located near each other. You're going to find a high point in the Caltech? So, I'm like Cocoa Beach. Point. The Caltech? And there's another one that they always find. Diamondback? No, I have oh, like a uh, freaking a sky? 12 pound a sky. 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 Well, because the skies are relatively inexpensive. I mean, that's probably why. I don't know. Um, I had one for a little while. Um, it was given to me just to try it out. It worked. You know, it, wasn't, it was a uh, Robin's Egg Blue, which I picked <laughs> out of some strange reason. I said, you know, let me see that one. Yeah. But um, I, I passed it on to one of my employees. Um, so what else have we been working on? Well, huh. you know what we've been working on? Time, Time to, to go. go dinner. <laughs> Boom. Yep. Sounds like a plan. All righty, well, uh, well, thank you so for much joining. for coming on. It's, it's been a freaking fantastic. I love having you on, man. And we didn't make it to talk about the topic that I wanted to talk about. I linked well, the article out there like way back. So I'll just go to Amaland. It's the first article. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was and, Joe. I was I, I, I didn't stop talking the whole time. So no, it's okay. <laughs> no, that's, that's good. That's a good show. It's less work for me. I can pro- I can program stuff. <laughs> you can you can you can uh you can search my hard drive while I'm talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he was like, and I told him that he uh, that uh, his hard drive is uh, low in space. Yeah. Yeah, that's it is. Cool. No, that's okay. Right. Well, um. Like, look at it. You can tell how much space you have left on it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, one of them's probably pretty full. Um, I don't know. I got bigger. We have bigger fish to fry right now. So, um, no. Uh, String already reports that. Oh, okay. 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 Walter Keller has low storage space. <laughs> oh, because it does yeah, a local I, recording. Yeah, I do have low yeah. storage space. I got. An, I'm running an old processor. That's what. It, that's what it is. Then eighty eighty. You're going. You're going home. I'll see you at home. Okay. Um. All right. All right. Very well. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, one more thing. Uh, we have one other thing. Walter. Hey, no- uh, nice right once of Walter needs to tell needs to get Joe to watch more movies. When I was like, "Have you ever seen a Star Wars?" No. What? Oh. Oh. Well. Okay. You're I'm not. not that, I'm not. Star Wars. I'm not. I'm not that bad. I don't watch a lot of movies, and there's some that some of the classic ones I haven't seen either. But I yeah, but I think Joe didn't see Die Hard. Yeah, you know, there's I, there's a couple. I'm pretty um, I'm f- uh, familiar with Star Wars stuff because I have a family that's very Star Warsish. So, um, um, uh, all the movies, all the toys, <laughs> all the, uh, uh, Friday nights. Uh, there's uh, you know the, the Bad Batch. You know, um, on. Um, which is the animated thing that's running? Oh right yeah, now. The, the the new season comes out soon. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I watch those. I enjoy that stuff. You know, the Bad Batch is, is a really cool, is a really good series. Yeah, those guys kind of remind me of my friends. You know. <laughs> uh, okay. Well. <laughs> yeah, you know, I want your SAT of fifty magazine to saving the money currently. Okay, well we're making stuff right, right now here. I'm putting things together. So. Um, we are building more uppers, so just a little bit of barrels. I got to get more uh, longer barrels and 29 inch barrels and stuff like that. But still, I have a good lead on barrels now, so it's that shouldn't be an issue. Um, um, yeah, that's me. Time to go. All right. One, two. So that is it. Well, I will, uh, I guess I'll see you guys later. All right. And uh, thank you for coming on. You can follow right. Walter at Safety. Safety. You check out Google Safety Harbor Firearms, Stin Parks. Also, check out Dirt Foot Racing on, yeah. on YouTube. 
And if you want some stuff I did years ago, go to Mower Death. One word, Mower Death. <laughs> And I'm mower. gonna be making I'm gonna be making some new no mower death videos, but mower death, yes, one word. That I've never I'm scared. He shoots running mowers. And weed whackers and stuff like that. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's uh <laughs> interesting. That's that's if I would have kept doing that, I'd probably be demo ranch by now. But um <laughs> I I I I I kind of forgot about it when I started, you know, you know, getting more busy. So Oh, well, get back to that. All right. Well, uh, check your temp files. It might be loaded up with old update files. There you go. All right. Uh, All right, guys. You know what uh, Rich, Flying Rich on YouTube, Flying Rich underscore official on Instagram, Flying Rich Firearms on YouTube, and you guys know where to find me because you're watching.